A speedboat S lies 40 kilometers in the direction 60 degrees south of west from a yacht Y. So I'll put yacht Y at the origin of this coordinate system. So 60 degrees south of west involves looking west and veering 60 degrees south of west and our speedboat is 40 kilometers from the yacht. The yacht has a steady speed of 12 kilometers per hour in the direction 20 degrees south of east. So here is the yacht's velocity vector. It's a vector that's 20 degrees, well it's in a direction that's 20 degrees south of east. The magnitude of this vector is 12, well it's 12 kilometers per hour, I can't fit in the units. The speedboat sets out with a steady speed of 10 kilometers per hour to get as close as possible to the yacht. So all we know of the speedboat is that the magnitude of its velocity is 10 kilometers per hour. But of course we know the direction has to be somewhere in this direction if it's going to intercept the yacht, if it wants to get as close as possible to the yacht. We are assuming that velocity vectors are constant, so we're dealing with constant speed in a straight line. So here's the velocity vector for the yacht, Vy, and the velocity vector for the speedboat has magnitude 10 but unknown direction. In the first question we want to see why it is not possible for the speedboat to intercept the yacht. Let's suppose that the velocity vector for the speedboat Vs makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis. Well, the horizontal component is the magnitude of the um, vector itself, that's 10, multiplied by the cos of theta. Let's look at the horizontal component of Vy. Well, we multiply the magnitude of the vector which is 12 by the cos of 20 degrees to get the side adjacent to 20 degrees in this right angle triangle. So we get 12 cos 20 to two decimal places, that's 11.28 kilometers per hour. So the speedboat is, uh, speedboat is moving with a speed of 12 along this line here, constant speed of 12 kilometers per hour. And its projection onto the x-axis is moving to the right with a constant speed of 11.28 kilometers per hour. So when the speedboat is here, it's obviously moving in this direction, velocity never changes. This here, this point here is its projection onto the x-axis. So its projection is moving with a speed of 11.28 kilometers per hour east. However, the projection of the speedboat is moving with speed 10 cos theta in the easterly direction. So if we project this point S onto the x-axis, project on at right angles. So there's the horizontal or the x component of Vs, 10 cos theta. 10 cos theta is less than 11.28. So that means that the speedboat can never catch up with the yacht. If the speedboat was to catch up with and collide with the yacht, then obviously the projection of the speedboat and the yacht onto the x-axis will have to collide. So this point will have to collide with this point. And both of these points are moving to the right. Okay, so let's see that. Why is 10 cos theta less than 11.28? Well, obviously 10 cos theta is less than 10. The, proje the projection of a vector in any direction is always less than the length of the vector. So you can see here the this component of Vs is less than 10. Okay, it's the x component of our horizontal component of the vector. It's always less than or equal to it. The only time it will equal it is when Vs is pointing in the easterly direction. It's not, as you can see in this picture, it's a little bit north, pointing a little bit north of east. Okay, so that's one way to see it. Another way to see it, of course, is the fact that the cos function is less than 1. It's actually between minus 1 and plus 1. So no, no matter what theta is, cos function lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So if we multiply a number that's uh, between minus 1 and plus 1 by 10, we're obviously going to get a number that's less than 11.28. So the maximum value that this thing can have is 10. That's if cos theta is equal to 1. So if you want to state a reason, you simply have to write this down. Next we are going to get the direction that the speedboat needs to head in to get as close as possible to the yacht. 
speedboat cannot intercept the yacht, but we can uh, certainly get as close. Uh, we can minimize the distance between the speed and speedboat and the yacht. Let's look at the situation at time t equals naught from the point of view of the speedboat. So we imagine an axis fixed with the speedboat, moving with the speedboat. And we are going to look at the velocity of the yacht relative to the speedboat. Okay, so the speedboat now is at the origin and these axes are moving axes. These axes are moving with the speedboat. So initially the yacht is 40 kilometers away from the speedboat like we have in this diagram here. Um, this angle here is 60 degrees, same as this angle. So here we have a pair of Z angles. So this angle down here must be 60 degrees also. We are going to get a rough idea of the vector Vys, that is the velocity of the yacht relative to the speedboat. We saw that the x component of the velocity of the yacht was greater than the x component of the velocity of the speedboat. So that means that the speedboat will never intercept the yacht. So from the point of view of the speedboat, the yacht has an x component that is positive, that's pointing in this direction. Okay. To actually find the x component of Vys, we'd have to take the x component of Vy and subtract the x component of Vs. But since 12 cos 20 is greater than 10 cos theta, when we subtract we get a positive quantity. So the x component of this vector is positive, it's pointing that way. So that's why Vys looks like this, it's slanting down, pointing down in the um, southeasterly direction. While we're at it, we might as well get vector Vys in terms of theta. Okay, so let's start by getting vector Vy. Well, we've already seen that the x component is 12 cos 20, so that's positive, that's in the positive y direction. So 12 cos 20 is a positive number. However, we want the y component to be negative. So this is the y component, it's pointing in the negative j direction. So we multiply 12 by sine 20, but we have to stick in a minus sign. All right, so that's how we get vector Vy. 12 sine 20 will be positive, but the minus sign ensures that uh, um, the, neg the y component of Vy is negative. Of course, we could go back to the um, formal definition of a vector. You know, we, the angle is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis to the vector. So if the angle in here is 20 degrees, then our angle around here is 360 minus 20, which is 340. And then we just uh, get the magnitude 12 by cos 340, and you'll see that that's the same as the cos of 20. It'll be positive. Then we have plus 12 times sine 340, but the sine of 340 degrees is actually minus sine 20. So everything will work out if we, you know, use the convention of measuring anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis to the vector. But it's just quicker here to work with the angle of 20 degrees and just recognize that the y component is negative. Now, as for Vs, we don't know what angle theta is, but we are assuming that theta is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. Well, theta will have to be some sort of an acute angle, actually, if the speedboat S is going to get as close as possible to the yacht Y. Um, you know, we don't have to assume anything about theta, actually. We can just use the convention for denoting a vector. We multiply the hypotenuse 10 by the cos of the angle measured from the anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. That's our angle theta. Multiply by i and then we have 10 sine theta j. So that 10 sine theta is the vertical component. It could be positive or negative. We don't have to assume anything here. As long as theta is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So we know from relative velocity that the velocity of y with respect to s, or relative to s, is vy minus vs. So we have to take vector vy and subtract vector vs. So for the i or x component we have to take 12 cos 20, the x component of vy, and subtract 10 cos theta. Now the two decimal places 12 cos 20 is 11.28. And we have to subtract the x component here of Vs, which is 10 cos theta. 
So this becomes the IRX component of VYS. Next, we take the Y component of J, which is minus 12 sine 20. Now to two decimal places, that's actually minus 4.10. And we have to subtract the J component of vector VS. So we get minus 10 sine theta. So as we saw before, 11.28 is greater than 10 cos theta. So the I component is positive. So that's why it's pointing this way. However, the J component is negative. Well, it, assuming that theta is an acute angle, which it more than likely is actually, you know, the, um, the speed rule has to go in a direction that makes an acute angle with the positive x-axis. So that means that sine theta is positive, but minus 4.1 minus 10 sine theta will then work out to be negative. So the y component of Vys will be downwards in the negative j direction. So that's how I know vector Vys has to look like this. So as seen from the point of view of the speedboat, the yacht will move in this direction here. But of course, the direction will vary depending on what theta is. So if we change theta, we will change the direction. But overall, it'll move in a direction, you know, it could be a bit like that, or it could be a bit like that. Um, but we have to decide the direction of Vys so that we can minimize the distance of the speedboat to the path of the yacht. So what we want to do is minimize the perpendicular distance of S to the path of Y as seen from S. Okay, so we want to minimize this blue line here. But you can see that in order to minimize this distance, we have to minimize this angle here. Now we are going to see a simulation of the vectors V, Y, S, V, Y, and V, S, but let's just sketch out these three vectors on a diagram. Um, I'll just do a rough sketch here and then we'll see a, an, a simulation. We can see that Vy is a fixed vector, its magnitude is 12 and its direction is fixed. Vs has a magnitude that's fixed, 10, but its direction is free to vary. So I'll show those two vectors over here. Now I will do vector Vys in black. Vector Vys joins the heads of these two vectors. Now what direction is it? Is, it, is the head there? Or is it the head of Vys here? Well. We can easily see that by following the triangle law. The head of Vys has to be here actually, because if we add Vs onto Vys, we have to get Vy by the triangle law. So we can see from the algebra of vectors here, vector Vs plus Vy minus Vs leads us to Vy. The Vs's cancel out if we add Vy onto Vy minus S. So the head of vector Vys occurs at Y, the first letter in the subscript, that's where the head is. Now here we have vector Vy and Vs on this diagram. Vy is fixed, its length is 12 and it makes an angle of 20 degrees with the uh, z-axis, measured clockwise from the positive z-axis. This line here represents the initial position of the two objects position at t equals 0, we know that makes an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis. Okay, so I'm trying to represent this line here, and we will be interested in the angle between vector Vys and this line. Remember, we want to minimize this angle in order to minimize our, the distance between s and the path of the yacht. So here is vector Vys, so I've just projected that vector back onto this line, and here we can see the angle between vector Vys and this line. We are interested in minimizing this vector. Vector Vy, Vs has magnitude 10, but its direction, theta, is free to vary, as you can see. So we want to find the angle theta that minimizes this angle up here. Let's suppose we start off at this value of theta, and now we see the angle is 52.75 degrees. Now let's minimize theta. Look what's happening to the angle. That angle is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, it goes down as far as about 43. And, uh, okay, then it starts to increase again. So now you can see it increasing again. 
it's gone back up to 44 and it's going to keep on increasing okay so this value is about the minimum it's not the exact minimum but it's close to it now we are going to solve this geometrically first and then we will use calculus so notice here that the minimum value of this angle appears to occur when this line here well vector vs is a is um perpendicular to this line in other words it happens when vector vs or the line true vector vs is tangent to the circle to a circle of radius 10 see it's not a tangent here but if i move this point down until this line becomes a tangent to the circle then we're getting the minimum value for this angle and if i move it down further now that line is no longer a tangent as you can see so we minimize the angle when this line is a tangent now noticing that notice that minimizing this angle is the same as minimizing this one down here watch what happens as I move this point down you can see that the angle of 73.8 degrees is increasing actually I'm sorry we are maximizing this angle down here see when the line is a tangent to the circle then this angle is at its maximum if I move it down further you'll see the angle now decreasing now it's decreasing down to 75 etc etc keeps on decreasing as we move this point down around the circle now if I move it back up again uh, you can see this angle here increasing it's increasing 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 and uh, then it starts to decrease again so what we need to do is calculate this angle here we may also be calculating this angle when this line when vector vs is a tangent to the circle but when a line is a tangent to a circle it is perpendicular to the line from the center of the circle to the point of contact of the tangent you can see that when we minimize this angle here this angle is about 90 degrees here it's very close to 90 degrees it's 89.79 as you can see so if I can make this angle 90 degrees well that's as close as I can get and then this angle up here is minimized and well this one down here is actually maximized okay so let's go and find this angle here we are more interested in this angle than the one up here because we want the direction of vector vys the direction of the yacht as seen from the speedboat if the speedboat is to get as close as possible to the yacht so that will happen as I said already when this angle is 90 degrees okay that will give us the maximum value of this angle here we will also be able to find angle theta for this situation so we have a right angle triangle we can use basic trigonometry to find this angle here because we've decided adjacent to this angle it's 10 and the hypotenuse is 12 so we see that the cos of theta plus 20 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse the side adjacent to this angle in indicated in red theta plus 20 is 10 and the hypotenuse is 12 so inverse cos of 10 12 is 33.56 degrees so now we can write down theta theta appears to be 13.56 degrees if we refer to, to the simulation we see we get a value that's very close to 13.56 if I can get this to exactly 90 this is as close as I can get to 90 degrees so our answers more or less match up so next we look to this smaller right angle triangle this one I'm highlighting in green the three angles add up to 180 of course are these two theta plus this green one must add up to 90 since the third one is 90 so this green one is just 90 minus theta minus minus 13.56 which is 76.44 so now at last we have this angle in here which will enable us to get the direction of to answer question two we just need angle theta which we calculated theta is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis so in terms of compass directions the direction the speedboat must go in in order to get as close as possible to the yacht is east 13.56 degrees north 